right. Actually, the waiting room. What's going on, people? I don't know how to turn my camera on. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in I know how to do this shit. This thing is really cool. All right, stand by one. I'm going to mute you guys all. Mute all. You all, minus me. Uh, give me two seconds. We'll see if there's more people showing up and then we'll get moving on this. All right. Um, okay, let's get this party started. So we are kicking off Heroic 28 tonight. Most of you, like Carmen, have been through this like 75 times now. So uh, you probably know most of the drill. Uh, Beth and Tiffany, you guys were at the seminar the other day. So it kind of is, is a lot of the same stuff we're going to talk about tonight, but it is worth going over again, just to hammer home the importance of it. And then on how to kind of uh, do the, do the tracking. Right. And we're going to be a little bit more purposeful with some of the, the habits and the behaviors, right. Cause what, what we need to remember is that uh, as much as like the nutrition and the workouts are important and they are right. As far as importance, I would put it like nutrition first and then uh, lifestyle and then workouts, right? Workouts are going to fall number three. So um, why don't we do this? Let's go over first. Um, I'm going to do some screen sharing and I can figure out how to do this. There we go. Um, desktop. All right, here we go. This is this is your tracker, right? Have you guys been able to access this? You can just kind of nod yes or no. No. All right. So in the coursework, in the coursework, there's a link to this. You have to download it, make a copy, right? So you really just open it up. You go down to make a copy and you click make copy and you can name it whatever you want. All right. And it'll give you the exact same sheet here. And then you'll have access to be able to track whatever you want in it um, or however you want. And, and then if you want to, this is totally optional, right? It is very helpful, uh, but you're more than welcome to share it with me. You just go to share and, and you send it to me via email and then I'll have access to it as well. And if you make me able to edit, then I can jump in. If you have questions about macros or whatever, uh, I can jump in, make adjustments based on what you need or what you're having issues with, or if you can't figure it out on your own, then I can get in there and I can move some stuff around and give you numbers and uh, adjust things as needed. So that way it's yours and it doesn't have to like live on my cloud. And then, you know, it, it just, I don't know, it's just better. That way you have control over it. So that's how you do that. Um, and this has your, your daily habits, your daily discipline, as well as your macro tracker, right? All here. And then your food list, which is also in the course. So it's not really like super relevant, but a food list here that you can look at if you, if you need to access something else. 
Okay, so let's start here, right? So we basically have have nine uh, nine nine factors. I almost said nine tenants, like Liver King, right? So basically, nine things to look at as far as like your daily disciplined actions. Uh, and if you can hit all nine of these, like you are going to be kicking ass and taking names. Now that said, you know, like so many other challenges, like Liver King stuff or uh, seventy five hard, like it all kind of honestly is the same. As much as I hate to say it, um, but this is kind of the same too. The the difference here is that instead of having to do these every day, what I want you to do is is individually for you pick out three, right? Pick out three of these things. Like for me, it's always like bedtime, bedtime, um, my heroic minute in the morning, and then my workouts. Right? Those are always what I default to. Okay, so if I can get those in, I know I'm doing okay, right? Even if I can't get or I screw up my diet or something like that. Like if I got to bed on time and I got good sleep, then I know I'm going to be like, that's, that's where I'm going to be making my money right now for you. It might be totally different. That's why I'm giving you, you guys, the, the, uh, the options as far as like what you're selecting and then we layer, right? So for this week, let's say I did work on, I want to work on bedtime. I want to work out one time and I want to get a gallon of water. That's fine. We can do all of those three, those three things for week one. And then next week we're keeping those three and we're going to add in heroic minute meditation and workout too, right. Or something to that effect. Okay. And if you can hit more of them, you can hit more of them. But what, what we want to do is make sure that this is sustainable and that we can take, take baby steps and progress along the way. I would much rather have you go a little slower out of the gate and maintain it rather than like go gangbusters out of the gate, get to week two or week one and a half and be like, fuck this, I'm out. <laughs> like, I just can't keep up with it all. And that's always what happens, right? That's what happens with 75 hard. That's what happens with other challenges. I've done it, you know, I've done it with this one. I tried to do this like all nine every day and uh, it, it it's hard. It's like super hard. Like you have to structure your, your whole day around these things. Um, which is really what we should do if we want to live a good, healthy life is like do these things every day. Uh, but if you're not doing them and you haven't put them into routine, it's going to take practice to get there. So setting a realistic and attainable and progressive uh, like idea behind it, it, it goes a, a, a lot longer and a lot uh, more sustainably. Does that make sense? All right. So let's go over all these uh, these these items here, right? Bedtime. As far as when you're getting to bed, like we're shooting for like seven to eight hours of sleep. So just do the math, like whatever time you have to get up, just make sure that you're going to bed like eight hours prior. Okay. So whatever that is for you, that is for you. But even if you're not getting there, have a drop dead time that you are going to sleep, right? And try to make it that time every night. So for me, that's like 1030. And if I can get into, into bed earlier, like 10, that's bonus points. But 1030 is reasonably what I can do, right? Uh, if I stay up later than that, I'm really dragging in the morning. But 1030 is my consistent bedtime. That's what I that's what I try to stick to. Now, I don't get necessarily eight hours of sleep every night because of that. Um, but consistency, consistency, consistency. And then if you can push it back or change it and, and make it work better, uh, you can do that in the future. But just pick a bedtime that's consistent and do it every day. The heroic minute, heroic minute is something I stole from uh, Matthew Kelly. He's a uh, a Catholic author, um, but he he really had a, a really this is like chapter one of his book Resisting Happiness, and uh, he talks about the heroic minute being as soon as that snoo as soon as that alarm goes off, you are getting your you have one minute to get your feet on the floor, right? No snooze, no nothing. As soon as that alarm goes off. You have one minute, you got six, a 60 second clock starts up and you need to get your feet on the floor moving forward. Jocko Willink talks about the same thing. He talks about like um, forward center of mass, like always moving forward, you know, that kind of thing. So that that's really important because it, it stacks wins straight out of the gate, right? It sounds like it's like, man, that, that's pretty easy, but it it isn't that easy. Once you start getting into it, you'll be like, man, these, these blankets are really, really heavy. <laughs> they just keep you there. Right. So giving yourself that, that timer, when it goes up, when your when your alarm goes off, that's like a timer. That's like your first workout of the day. Like, can you get up, sit up and get your feet on the floor and get ready to go within a minute? If you can do that, you're, you already got to win. That's why I really like that one. 
10 minute meditation, that can be really anything you want. Um, I do this a lot lately with movement. Um, meditation is a little different for everybody. It doesn't have to be necessarily sitting and being silent and like closing your eyes and like being like a monk. Like it doesn't have to be like that. Um, I do, I do, like I said, I do this with, with two things, ice and my morning cardio. So I, I do a cold exposure, which we'll get to on the back end here. Um, but I also do my first workout in the morning usually is like a slow aerobic base, like gear one nasal breathing workout, but I'll also really work my breath and really work my meditation into that, into movement. Um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of different forms you can take, but basically 10 minutes of just thinking and, and checking in with yourself and like being grateful. You can use prayer in this. You can use like whatever you want. Right. But it's basically just like some type of silence and breath work and, and all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, workout one, that's, that can be, we need, we got two workouts we need to do, right? One of them has to be the weights, right? We got to lift weights like three times a week. That's what we're shooting for. Um, the other one is, is just, it can be a 10 minute walk. It can be some slow cardio. It can be some accessory work. Uh, it can be, it can be basically anything you want it to be right. That second one, I give you the first one, the second one, you know, like the easiest way to do it is just to get 10, 20 minutes of, of like slow gear one, nasal breathing, you know, get that, get that in. And, uh, then you're just going to, it's going to get more volume, get more aerobic base. And that's super, super critical. Um, so that's the easiest way to do it, but don't stress out about like, Oh, it's like a full second workout. I mean, it is, but it isn't, is, you, you know what I'm talking about? Does that make sense? Yes. No. Okay, cool. Um, all right. Alcohol and sugar. There's as much as I hate to say it, there's nothing that'll derail your health and your, um, your, your body composition, your performance, nothing hinders it pretty much more than alcohol. Alcohol is extremely detrimental, right? So if you're drinking more than I would say four drinks a week, like you really need to, um, assess your alcohol use and look at it, you know, honestly and say, what am I drinking for? You know what I mean? And as much as like four drinks a week might not be that much, um, when you start looking at the long-term effects and the ramifications of it, uh, it really, really does some negative things and it screws up your hormone. Uh, it, it really screws up your sleep. There's a ton of sleep studies that talk about alcohol and the negative effects it has on sleep. So if you have one drink, one drink, right, that is going to disrupt your entire night of sleep. And when you disrupt your entire night of sleep, all of your hormones that are used to like recover and repair. And then uh, like cortisol, like your cortisol is burned up, like right about now, cortisol is about tapped out. And as you sleep, right, the cortisol level rises and then it spikes in the morning. That's what wakes you up. Alcohol is going to disrupt that. So your cortisol, all the other hormones, like they're not going to work properly because you're not sleeping. You're, you're basically like sedated, right? And when you're using sedation instead of actual sleep, it's not, your body doesn't respond like real sleep. Okay. So anyway, bottom line, alcohol is really bad. Okay. Um, I posted and I'll post it again. Andrew Huberman has an amazing podcast where he talks about the, the effects of alcohol on the human body. And it's, it's not judgment as far as like what you should do, what you shouldn't do. It's just, hey, these are the facts based on science. This is what this shit does to your body. And it's really gnarly. And I wish I would have heard that in college because I definitely would have drank less. So um, there you go. So alcohol and sugar, right? Avoid it. So if you can avoid uh, alcohol, obviously, but extra sugar, right? If you can cut that out aside from like fruit and, um, you know, some naturally occurring stuff like that, like that's okay. Um, it, if you really got to be conscious about like reading labels and understanding what you're consuming, because like sugar has a lot of sneaky names. Um, so just avoid it at all costs. And that's going to really clean up inflammation. That's going to really clean up water retention. Um, and then that kind of thing. All right. Gallon of water a day. Like we were talking about the other night for that, uh, for the seminar, you know, how much water should you drink it? Listen, if you're shooting for a gallon a day, uh, and I kind of base this on an, an adult male. So if you're a smaller female, like you probably don't need a gallon a day, um, you know, shoot for it, but definitely like half gallon a day, I think is, I think is fine. Um, and then, uh, 
Yeah. And then follow a diet, right? So whatever that is, that that can be whatever you're working on. If it's macros, cool. We can do that together. Um, if it's not macros, if you're like, hey, I, I'm, I'm not down with that. It's just like too far beyond me or, or I just don't like it or whatever. Um, then we can go off the food list. If you're already doing something else, you can do that, right? Whatever you're going to do, we just need to be disciplined to and, and, and stick to it, right? That's the biggest thing. Like trying to create consistency is the name of the game for this entire 28 days, okay? Um, so whatever that is, and, and, you know, I can help you along the way with basically all of it. Like I said, if it's, if it's the stuff on here, cool, we got the macros, we got the food list, we got all the stuff there. You have the tools for it. Um, then we can use it. And if you don't want to do that, or you want to do something different, like we totally can talk about that as well, right? Just be consistent, right? Remember what's the most effective nutrition and workout plan. You guys know what it is? As much as I'd like to say it's the stuff that I create, it really, it's the stuff that you'll stick to. Whatever you will do long-term will work, right? Right, Carmen? Like whatever you do, whatever you consistently do works, right? So just keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it, right? And aside from something that's hurting you, like it'll work, you know, you just got to put the time in. So follow a diet. Uh, last thing here, this is... Um, as far as priorities, I'd probably say this is the lowest priority, but you will get some really good feedback from this cold and heat. Like I love doing cold exposures. I've been doing them since like 2016. Um, I got introduced to them at the same time I was doing some, uh, some breathing stuff, like some Wim Hof style breathing and, um, uh, with Brian McKenzie, uh, from used to be CrossFit endurance. And like, this shit is amazing. Um, it really, especially the cold, does a ton for what's called state management, right? So if you guys have any issues with like anxiety, um, like I, I have some, I would, I would call it moderate anxiety, um, usually just kind of high strung, you know, um, the cold is awesome because you get into it and it sends you into a sympathetic fight or flight response immediately, right? Whether it's a cold shower or an ice bath or jumping into a bond, right? It's all the same. Um, now, what it does from there, like you had, you get to, you get to choose and decide, like, I don't need to stay sympathetic. I don't need to stay in this fight or flight response. I can stay here, calm down and relax and work my breathing and then purposefully change your state from sympathetic to parasympathetic. And once you do that and, and learn how to like harness that, like I got in today and it took me four breaths before I was able to harness my breathing, calm down and crash out. So I spent like two and a half, three minutes in the ice. Uh, and I think it was like 39 or 40 degrees, but, uh, it was like three breaths were, <laughs> and then crash out. So you shift hard one way and you purposefully take it back the other way. And just learning how to do that. You can, you can start applying that to the rest of your day. Like not in the ice, when stress comes up, you can manage it. When, when you start feeling yourself shifting hard, to a fight or flight response based on an argument, based on your kids, based on uh, some factor outside of your control, you start to get all ramped up. You feel it. You say, no, I don't need this right now. I'm going to calm down. And then you basically like downregulate the same way that you do in life as you do with the ice, right? That's why it's so impactful. Now it does have some other like physical benefits, like as far as hormones and neurotransmitters and dopamine, uh, that, that kind of stuff, serotonin, like it does have a positive effect on all of those, right? Adrenaline. Um, and especially if you can do it early in the morning, it really does. But to me, those are secondary to learning how to control your, your state, controlling your nervous system. And that makes a huge difference just in, in your stress level, right? It's like we talked about on, uh, um, on Saturday, yesterday at the seminar, right? Stress is how you frame it. So if you have a negative view of the stress, it's going to impact you way worse than it will if you have a positive view of it. So knowing how to harness your, your central nervous system and your sympathetic stress response, knowing how to harness that is going to give you a better ability to have a positive frame for the stress. So the stress that typically tears people up, like you can, you can seemingly absorb it and be unfazed. Right. So anyway, that spent a lot of time on that one. That one's really cool. But like I said, as far as, uh, as far as like, hang on one second, as far as 
like priorities. I'd probably put this one last. I would work on these other ones first, but you will get a big, a big effect from that. Unmute. How do I do that? Did you Here. have a question? Yes, because like the, the hot cold, do you, to, do you do that? Which do you do first? Like, so I have a hot tub and then I do an ice shower or should I do it the other way around? So if you're going to do contrast like that, um, I the, the big rule of thumb that I've heard is just end on cold, right? So whatever you're going to do, end on cold. It doesn't really matter how you how you shift it up and down, stuff like that. Um, I've done contrast showers before where I go uh, hot and then cold about every, you know, 30 seconds to a minute. And then I'll end with like 30 seconds to a minute of just as cold as I can possibly take on it. Right. Um, so most of the days I don't get heat. I don't have access to a sauna. Um, so I just do cold. Like you can do one or both. If you have a sauna, you can use a sauna. If you don't really get much out of the cold or you don't, you know, or you don't like it, or you like the sauna better, like whatever, uh, as long as you can hit one of them, you know, that that's cool. If you can hit both. Awesome. If you want to do contrasting like that, like you can play games with that too. It's, it's really pretty cool stuff. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So that's your daily discipline. Are there any other questions on that? Good to go. All right. Okay. Here's your macro tracker. Uh, like I said, if you guys are tracking macros, uh, it, this is redundant, but it's redundant for um, out of necessity for one. And then for two, um, just because it redundancy is like add more discipline, right? If you have to do things over and over and over again. So um, this is the easiest way that I've seen to do this, right? It's just a simple Google doc, right? Uh, you just put the date in, you can stretch that down. Boom. All right. So now we put our calories and then all of our macros, right? Based on based on the stuff that like how you calculated it. Uh, you just plug it all in here. Okay. Fiber is about 20 to 30. If you can keep it in that range, that's awesome. Um, body weight. I would try to take a weight at like, I would say at least once a week, if not twice a week. I would like to see it probably twice a week, right? Um and then this is some biofeedback stuff. You can put it in there if you want, or you can wait and, and tell me about it on these calls. Either way is fine. But like how hungry are you? Um, what's your strength feel like? What's your mental clarity? Are you adhering to everything? And then food quality and sleep, right? So how are all those things tracking? Uh, but really, if you want me to help you with your macros, like I need this filled out, okay? So you take whatever you're using, whether it's my fitness pal or carbon or whatever other million um tracking apps there are on the on the interwebs um you take those numbers and plug them right into here and then and if you like i said if you want to share it with me then uh, i can i can jump in and i can make adjustments i can do whatever all right but uh pretty simple stuff food list here about to get interrupted <laughs> uh food list here so i'm big on red meat uh, beef, bison, steak, right? Fatty fish is also a really good protein source that, you know, tuna, salmon, trout, all that kind of stuff, pretty basic uh, for your carbs, right? This is, these protocols, these nutritional protocols are are loosely based on some autoimmune protocols. Um, so the carb sources are micronutrient dense with fruits and veggies, um, but we don't need a ton of them, right? You can see fruit about two servings, veggies about two to four servings. You can get a little bit more veggies if you want, but you don't have to go crazy with it, right? Um, we're not trying to get a ton of of like fibrous veggies, I guess. Um, we just want enough to get our fiber score up to about 20 or 30, right? Um, and then the rest of our carbs, if you need more carbs, white rice. Okay, easily digestible, good source of of, uh, of simple carbohydrate. And uh, that's pretty much about it, right? And then fats. Fats, if you keep it simple, just go avocado and then like cold pressed oils. Try to stay away from, from too many nuts. 
um cashews stuff like that are really dense calorically there's a ton of calories in them and like i, I think God, i can't remember one serving of of um oh what is it Maybe not cashews who am i thinking of either way um is like three or four right cashews i think is like four or five cashews and that's like a serving so it's not many um and for a lot of people uh if you're if you're consuming a lot of nuts like tree nuts stuff like that um, you can get a lot of gut irritation with that, right? So try to avoid that for now. Um, notice peanuts, peanut butter, not on here. Those are highly inflammatory. So again, what we're trying to do is give your gut lining a break from digesting a bunch of stuff that it's always used to doing, right? So autoimmune protocol starts with gut health, okay? So um, doing stuff like this, and then it's a little bit more, if you go to the um, the course, it's uh, it's a there's a few more items in there. Those are fine too. If you have questions on like, hey, can I eat this? Can I not eat this? Um, you know, just uh, just shoot me a message and uh, we'll figure it out, right? But uh, yeah, the idea is to make it very digestible, right? And then uh, macro and micro, right? Nutrients. So we're getting all of it, okay? All right, so that is that sheet. You guys good so far? Still with me? All right. Any questions? All right. Um, trying to think what else we got. Yeah, and you guys have been in the course. You've seen the coursework. Yeah, no. All right, we got some blank stairs. I'll hang on a second. Let me bring it up. All right. Okay, so to access the court work, coursework, um, this is going to look a little bit different, but I'm sure you'll figure it out, right? So you go to Mighty Networks, sign in. Um, all right, this is my test one. Okay, so from here, you're going to go to, you'll have access to Heroic Industries HQ and then the Heroic 28, right? So to go to the Heroic 28 and access the coursework, here's your feed. If you got questions, you can post right in here um, and I'll be able to get back to you there. Just make sure you can, this basically operates just like a Facebook group. Um, you can tag me in it. You can tag other people in it. I think you can post videos, stuff like that too. Um, you can see the events. We have a live right now. So you'll access the lives through there. Um, this is probably the easiest way. So go to table of contents, right? And then you've got all your stuff here. Okay. And there you go. It'll teach you how to, how to do your deficits, how to get your, um, your, your macros, your a days, your, your deficit. So if you're doing macros, right. Um, we'll go and you want to start going in a deficit. We'll take our a days, which is basically a, you know, pseudo baseline, but it's just our normal like 12 X is, is really what we're going off like 12 X body weight. Uh, like we talked about the other night, just multiplier method. And then from there we will go 20% reduction for one day. So it's a series of three days. So a days are just regular 12 X B days are 20% reduction. And then we'll just add in more 20% less days once a week. So first week is all A's. Second week, you go A, A, B. And then so it's like 12X, 12X, and then 20% down, right? So we're just reducing calories a little bit. 
And then you can see the following week, days 15 to 21, we go A, B, B. So two 20% deficit days. And then the last week gets real dicey because it's all B days. So now we're at a full 20% deficit. So it's just a progressive stair step down based on where your 12X score is. Okay. And then this, and all this stuff will take you right through everything to like step-by-step, step, like um, how to, how to do the, the nutritional calculations. Here's the approved food list. You know, it's got some other videos in there. Um, so this is, this is like the hardest slash not hardest part is all you got to do is watch these videos and it'll tell you the structure, right. Um, macro calculations. And that's pretty much it. Right. And you can watch those as many times as you want. If you can't get it or you don't, or you don't quite understand it, then, uh, j again, just message me. We'll get through it. It's super, not, not that, uh, complicated as much as it might seem that way. Um, and keep in mind, if you don't want to do this, and you just want to go off of the approved food list. Like you can do that and it's still more than likely going to have a really good effect, right? If it's just too much, right? So keep in mind, like this is a stress. It want, I, we want this to be stressful, but we don't want it to be so stressful that it's like overwhelming and you, you get paralyzed, right? If you start feeling like that, we got to start taking some steps back. And, uh, you know, and, and just kind of go from there. But like you can see, it's a little bit more involved here. And the course works pretty simple and basic, right? But there's there's some decent good information on there. Um, and I would strongly recommend going through it, okay? Um, all right, last thing. And actually, I will send you the video. If you didn't get the video already, um, Tiffany, Beth, I sent you the emails manually. Did you get those other emails I sent? Okay, cool. So uh, the other thing, the last thing, and this is going to look different because it's my coach end, is train heroic. This is where all of your workouts are going to live. And this is obviously the desktop version. The app looks slightly different, but you'll still get the idea. Okay. Okay. Tiffany, you got it. All right. I'm just going to use you since you're already up here. Okay. So you go into train heroic, you, you take the code that's in your email and then you plug it into this thing, right? You just pick the dates and it auto populates all of it. Okay. So it's all right there, right? You get all your workouts. You can see we got box squats, um, deadlifts, heels, elevated goblet squats, and gorilla rows. You've got three days a week of lifting right? And the lifting sessions will probably take about anywhere from, um, I don't know, what would you say, Carmen, like 45 to 60 minutes ish. Yeah. 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 Uh, 45 to 60 minutes. So nothing like outrageous, uh, but you're going to have to manage your time. Make sure you watch your rest intervals on this, or it, it could start to expand. Um, and maybe it takes, you know, a couple of days to kind of get used to it, but, uh, you know, overall, like you'll start to get into a groove and you'll be able to knock it out right away on the other days. Like you've got basically gear one, right? That means all nasal breathing aerobic work. Okay. Um, some people call it zone two, right? Uh, I use a gear system. That's just what Brian McKenzie used at CrossFit Endurance back in the day. And it's really effective. I just think it like, it's basically, you almost feel like you're slacking, right? You almost feel like you're going so slow that you should be going faster. But these are days that we don't want a ton of intensity because we're getting good intensity here, right? There's gotta be some, some back and forth, some ebb and flow of this. Okay. But do not skip like this is not like uh, like an active recovery day. Don't take it like an active recovery day. This is work, but you need to work in a different way, a way that's not super intense, but we're really focusing on building our aerobic system for several reasons. Number one, it creates more effective like uh, utilization of body fat. And then two, it's going to keep you alive for longer. So it's going to really hit basically all of those goals that we talked about, the, um, the aesthetics, the health and the performance. It'll help all of them. Okay. So base aerobic work, you can really never get too much of, uh, because the intensity is not super high. The thing that people burn up on is when we try to overdo intensity and that can be with jujitsu, that's weightlifting, that's CrossFit, that's all of it. Intensity is super fun and exciting. And I think everybody here is, 
involved in like military and law enforcement at some point, right? So it's easy for all of us with this this mindset. We've been around cops and military and first responders and jujitsu people. It's easy for us to go hard. It's not easy to take it easy sometimes. So it, it, we got to remember there's got to be balance with it. Um, and that's something, honestly, I struggle with too. I just got to remember like, you don't have to burn it down every day. It doesn't make you tougher. <laughs> Sometimes it just makes you stupid. So um, remember, moral of the story, right? Tuesdays and Thursdays are important. And then if you get off on your schedule, right, you can shuffle these around. There's nothing that says that a Tuesday can't be a Monday and a Monday can't be a Friday. Like it's fine. Just make sure you're hitting the days. All right. Um, and you got your whole month mapped out here. There you go. That's pretty much it. All right. Um Questions on that. Just a reminder on those off days to still get motion or movement in. You talking Friday and Saturday? Yeah. Like your off days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those are active recovery days, right? That So hopefully all this stuff that we're doing here will make Friday and Saturday even even more fun because you'll be able to go out and do stuff like easier after you get rid of the initial soreness i guess if this is like a new thing where you're like man uh i'm just getting into lifting um then like hold back a touch right so don't take this to like a, a 10 out of 10 because if you go 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 intensity for three days straight by the time you get to saturday and sunday you're not going to want to move and when you get it to Monday, you're going to be like, I'm so sore. I don't want to do anything. I don't know how I'm going to get this work out of it. So take this at like sevens across the board for week one. And then maybe we can crank it up to like eights here and then keep it at like eight out of 10, nine out of 10 by week four. Okay. So if this is like a new thing for you. If you're just getting back into training, do not go out and crush week one. Just get it in, get a decent workout and know that like, that's that's the way we need it because I don't want you so wrecked that on the 14th I get a call from Tiffany and it's, it's like I can't move I don't know what you've done to me right that's counterproductive okay so just hold back just a touch get all the work in remember it's like total volume so I don't want get all the volume in here as hard as you can get no volume in here then it's a wash you know what I mean so if we can get some good intensity here some good intensity here, start cranking it up here. Now we've got three weeks of volume that we've been consistent on, which is way better, way better than having like one week really hard and then two weeks where we're trying to recover and we're not doing anything, okay? Um, yeah, and then here, walk, get outside. The weather's breaking, it's really nice. You know, uh, just do stuff, enjoy life. Like that's your mission. Like we're doing this to enjoy life better. That's what you do on the weekends. Okay. Um, all right. Any other questions about the training? Okay. Stop share. All right. Um, that about covers all of that stuff. So now what I, what I do want to, a couple of things I want to touch on before we jump off or before we get into questions is number one, um, since we already talked about like the logistic nuts and bolts of stuff. Let's just keep going with that. Uh, protein and total calories, right? So the two numbers that you need, right, are your protein and your total calories. Those things are always going to be what we go back to, right? What's your uh, and if if you say, hey, I'm having trouble with something, or hey, I'm not having progress. Like, are you hitting your total calories and are you hitting your protein? I will always ask those things. And if the answer is no and no, then it's like, well, we got to get those things in check before we can move on. And it's kind of like, if we don't know what those are, we don't know what our total calorie needs are, and we don't know what our total protein needs are, or we're not hitting those consistently, then I'm just going to say, hit your protein. Like we have to hit that protein score. If we don't hit the protein, then like everything else is going to be, I don't want to say irrelevant, but it's going to be fighting an uphill battle, right? We've got to get those in check first. Okay. Um, and we can play games and try to get little hacks on how to do it. But basically it comes down to like, Protein. What are protein sources that I enjoy eating that I can eat sustainably? And how do I get enough of that through my day? Right. Um, I typically start with post-workout meal being like usually um, 
this is the one, the one or two supplements that I recommend is like a post-workout shake of some type, whether that's like a whey protein or collagen, um, is fine. You know, whatever you want to do is fine, but that'll give you about 20 to 30 grams of protein right there. Right. So that's a chunk, right? 20, 30 grams post-workout. That's a meal. All right. And then from there, you start piecing in the rest of your day and then say, where am I getting the rest of my protein in? Right. But you start with that post-workout and then you piece it all around that. Okay. So that's how you start getting your protein score, your protein number in check. Okay. Um, protein, total calories. That's, that's probably going to be the mission for the week, right? Uh, if you've done this a few times, Carmen, I'm not sure where you're at, but if you want to start tracking macros harder, like get, get after it, right? I'd like to, I'd like to work with you more on that. Um, so we can get into your tracker more specifically, but e even if you take a month and you just get your protein and total calories in, it, you're probably going to have a good result. That, that's what most people do through this. Like most of the time, the first time through, like more and more, I'm seeing people not even get into macros as much as they are just getting their protein and total calories in check. And it's still working really well, like seven to 13 pounds. Like that's not, that's not marketing. That's just the, the average on what people are losing. So, um, and that's just paying attention to it's being purposeful. So that's the logistics. Any questions on the logistics, the workouts, the nutrition, anything like that? Okay. All right. So the last thing that I'll leave you with is um, the concept that, that I've been harping on probably for like the last like three months or so is um, the reason that we fall short, right? What do we fall short? And when we fall short on things or we don't get progress in areas of our life, that can be, you know, with, with anything, right? Not just fitness and nutrition, but with money, with relationships, with anything, right? You either have you have one of three things going on. You have a knowledge problem. And some of you guys have probably heard me say some of this, right? A knowledge problem. You don't know the information to, to make it better, right? With this, maybe it's like, if we use this context, like I didn't know that I should have had, I should have one gram of protein per pound of, of lean body mass. Like, okay, well now, you know, right? It's the knowledge problem is no longer there. All right. Um, the other issue is belief issues. Right. So if you're if you have belief problems that are causing issues in your life, then it's like you don't be either believe that you can get it done. Like you don't believe in yourself that you can achieve it or you don't believe that you deserve it. It's, it's usually one of those two things. Right. So belief issues. Right. So so look at what you think and like your internal thoughts and and, and like internal dialogue, stuff like that. It matters a ton. Um, and we all go through, you know, ebbs and flows of of, you know, Oh, like things are awesome. I, I love how this is going. Like, and then all of a sudden, like a week later, you'd be like, this really sucks now. It's not working. It's like a roller coaster of emotions sometimes. But you just always have to say, like, all right, what do I honestly believe? Like, do I believe do I believe I can do it? And do I believe I deserve it? And and like that's that's really important. Um, and a lot of times what I run into with with, you know, usually usually it comes with like, when I ran the gym, I would see a lot of guilty moms that would come in and be like, well, I feel selfish doing this. And now I see guys that are saying the same thing. Well, I feel selfish spending the money to do this program when I should be spending it somewhere else. And it's like the, the belief issue is, is not selfish, right? If you believe you deserve it. Right. And that's, that's like, I was actually listening my son had first communion today and I was listening to, um, uh, uh, the gospel and the homily and and he was you know the priest was talking about like basically coming out of being called out of the darkness right and it's like we're all being called to become more and that's not a selfish thing to do you know what i mean it's not selfish to to want to become more that's what we're destined to become more and this whole and this, so like so anytime you have a belief issue just remember that like we're being called to be more you know, greater, we're growing, you know, and expanding. Um, that's not, that's not like a selfish thing. That's actually what we're supposed to do because it makes everything better. It makes the kingdom better for everybody. So um, that's belief issue. And the last one is the most common uh, of faults is routine and application. And this is where this course and this program will, uh, will hopefully like set it apart and, and help you guys a ton 
is just how to use this information, the beliefs, all that stuff, and how to apply it specifically to you. Because that is is totally different. The way that you're going to use it is different than the way that I'm going to use it is different the way that Tiffany's going to do it and Carmen's going to do it. Like it's all going to be different. So how do we tweak this stuff and make these things work for your schedule, for your routine, for your life, right? Um, and it and it's totally manageable. But sometimes you just need somebody to tell you, like, oh, just step back, look at it from big picture. Here's how I would do it if I was in your situation. All of a sudden, you're like, oh, I didn't think of it like that. Like, boom, done, no problem. And then we're off to the races. So, um, again, just to recap: knowledge problem, belief problem, or routine problem, right? We'll cover all three of those, okay? Uh, the knowledge stuff's in the coursework. The uh, belief stuff is in these calls. And then the application is in, you know, all of it. So um, that's all I got. I am going to, how do I do this? Open it up to you guys then. You guys got any questions? Anything you want covered? There we go. Uh, the first workout was definitely the hardest, but it actually felt great getting into the gym and doing stuff again. So that was that was nice. And the the food, the diet, prepping, everything like that wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. Mommy. So um, yeah. So prepping. So this is this is like a great application routine type question or just comment i guess is like meal prepping is different for everybody like the way i do it is like super simple it's kind of like how i've always cooked food since college so i'll make like a bunch of sweet potatoes a bunch of meat and then i just put that stuff like i'll just take like you know five ounces of beef and like two hard-boiled eggs and like half a sweet potato and that's my lunch and I like, I don't need it to be any more complicated than that. I'll eat that for like most meals. So I just take components, protein component, carb component, fat component. What do I need? Measure it out. And then boom, there we go. So um, some people get real, I don't know how you did it, Tiffany, but like some people get real crazy with uh, like, like everything in containers and separate it out. Like I can't handle any of that. I've tried it and it just does not work for me, you know? So there's a million different ways you can do them. Like you can meal prep. None of it's wrong. It just depends on what's going to work for your schedule. That's what I pretty much did. I made a bulk of chicken, beef, and white rice and vegetables. And then I just threw it in, portioned out containers for the week because we are busy. So it's just easier just to have it so I can grab it and go. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can do that, that works really well. Right. The, the, I, I'm just not that organized. <laughs> Anything else? What do we got? Anything pressing? Any thoughts? Any comments? Concerns? I do. Like yeah. going through this program several times, I find that I learn something every single time and not to be hard on myself and to do what I can do, not to keep pushing myself past the limits. Um, and, and it's neat to see other people learn and do this. So it's not a all or nothing, do what you can. I, I, and I stress that to the other people that I that just learned to just do what you can and not give up. So that's, you'll get there. So. I love it. And that's, and that's a good point too, is like, you can do this multiple times and you'll find different things about yourself every time because like, we're not the same people that we were even yesterday. Like you're someone different today than you were yesterday. And if you really look on a, uh, on a, on a cellular level, your cells are turning over every year. So in 365 days, you'll be actually an entire different person. And you're an entire different person now than you were a year ago based on your cells. Right. So it's just kind of interesting. You start looking at that and it's like, man, we are always changing and evolving. And how do we continue to grow and evolve? All right. Anything else? 
Cool. All right. So we will be here same bat time, same bat channel next week. Um, you guys are off and running. Hit me up if you have any questions at all. Um, if you do have questions specifically, you want to message me directly. You can do it through the app. That's probably the easiest way. Just do it right through um, right through the network, the Mighty Network. And uh, I'll be able to get back to you there. But also, if what I'll probably tell you is if you have a question, there's at least five other people that have the same question. So go ahead and just post it in the group if you want to, uh, if you're comfortable with that. And then we can address it for everybody. So uh, get after it. And uh, if you guys don't have anything else, I'm going to jump off here and wrangle some kids and get them to bed before it gets too late. All right. Check you guys later.